So the agenda to be covered today, uh, so we will talk a little bit about the BI main components. Then uh, we will have an intro with the Pentaho family. Then we will see an end-to-end -end, uh, application starting from ETL to dashboards using Pentaho BI Suite's different components. So that would include L, Pentaho data integration. And then we will be creating cube on that data mart what we create in the ETL and then we will do a ad hoc analysis using SECU and after that we will see a little bit about how to create dashboards in the CD framework. Uh, so to start with uh, let's have an uh, intro about the main components of uh, BI. So OLAP and OLTP. So there is a difference between the different types of uh, database methodology used in the BI as well as compared to traditional operating uh, operational data systems. So this table basically shows you a few points how these both uh, systems differ from each other. So source of data, operational data, OLTPs are the original source of data. So basically, uh, so you do a transaction in a store or a bank. So that is your an OLTP transaction. Whereas in OLAP, what you do is that it is a consolidated data from all these different transactional systems uh, of a historical period. So it's not a daily, daily transactional basis. It's basically a uh, consolidated data of, over a large period. What is the purpose of OLTP data? So for OLTP, uh, we use this uh, these data for to run our daily business needs. Like if you go to a store, you buy something, and then at the end of the day, the managers want to see how much uh, sales we did today. So that is a daily uh, operational report what uh, we get from the OLTP system. But if we go to OLAP, we have to uh, view the data in a way that we can solve some business problems arriving from the data, where we are heading low, where we are going good, and what can be done to see if we are going low, what can be done to come out of it. So sort of a business decisions uh, is taken from the OLAP uh, database data. What the data? So as I told you, it, it's, it's in the OLTP, it's basically uh, daily transactional data. So it reveals a snapshot of ongoing business process. Whereas in uh, OLAP system, you have a multi-dimensional view of various kinds of business data. Uh, it can come from your uh, uh, transactional data it can come from your ERP from CRM so it's 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 a combination of uh, multi views of data what we have in the OLAP system so apart from that how we insert and get the data read the data it differs from OLTP and OLAP system so in the OLTP system we have a very basically a small inserts and update initiated by the users so you go to a store you enter one you buy something and that's an insert done on the OLTP system. But if you compare with the OLAP, it's a very long process. You, you might be inserting millions of row at one time, at one go, when you have a historical data spanning over a couple of years. So that is a major difference between inserts and updates uh, on the OLAP and OLTP system. Then if you go on the uh, dimension modeling of the database, uh, there is also a, a huge difference how we model our OLAP data model and as compared to our OLTP data. So in our OLTP, it's a highly normalized <coughs> view of the database. We have multiple tables joining each other. So it's very, very normalized uh, data structure, what we do in our uh, OLTP system. Whereas in our OLAP, it's, it's normalized, but it's not too much uh, uh, normalized that uh, uh, we can say it's, it's like OLTP. So we have a normalization here, but it's very, very small type of uh, normalization with few tables joining each other. So I will be showing you the difference between the OLTP and OLAP, uh, how we model it in the coming slides. Then in the queries, if we go then on the OLTP system, uh, what we do basically is that uh, we query very 
small amount of data. So we, we want to see today's sales. So just we will query today's sales and get the results. But on the OLF side, it's very complex queries often where we aggregate data of millions of rows to get the results out of our business data. So this is was a uh, difference between OLAP and OLTP, uh, what we have. So as I was talking about the dimensional modeling, uh, we follow two types of models in our uh, OLAP uh, modeling. So one is a star schema, uh, where uh, one fact table is surrounded by a couple of dimensions. So this is very, uh, uh, a very low normalization sort of things where a single fact table is surrounded by a couple of dimension tables. So if I say that this is a small normalization, I mean that your dimensions are not going to be in millions. It will be or not in millions. So if we join a dimension with a fact table, we are joining smaller amount of data. But if you see in the transactional system on the normalization side, then we can have two or three tables joining each other with uh, multiple uh, million rows and that could hamper the query. So in the star schema, we follow one fact table surrounded by multiple dimension tables. And each dimension is represented as a single table. And the primary key of the dimension is joined to the fact table's foreign key. So another uh, uh, what we follow in the uh, data modeling in the BI domain is Snowflake schema. So in the Snowflake schema, it's, it's basically a sort of a star schema but it's extended version of star schema. So if, if you see in the picture here, this way, so this my time dimension is further uh, denormalized <coughs> into other dimensions. So what we have done here is that we have extended this uh, snowflake, uh, star schema into snowflake schema. So this is the difference between uh, star and snowflake schema. So I'm, what I'm talking about is dimension modeling. So what basically is a dimension data model? So when we talk about the BI, in the BI domain, we talk about dimensions, we talk about hierarchies, we talk about measures, fact tables. So what are these basically? So if I say dimension, what is a dimension? So basically a dimension is a category of information. What I mean by category of information is that when I'm having a table, uh, in uh, I'm having some data. Let's say I'm having a column uh, which showing me a sales figure. So when somebody sees on that column, it's very hard to find out what sales correspond to what. Unless and until I am having another column along it where it will show some sort of uh, category information, some sort of information regarding that sales amount. So let's say I put 2000 year here. So now in the next column, I'm having year and then sales. So it clearly shows that the, the sales figure are of a particular year. So this is a sort of a dimension I'm having, year dimension. Attribute, a unique level within a dimension is an attribute. So if I say that I'm having a dimension and that dimension is my date dimension, so I will be having um, uh, unique levels in that dimension basically, like year, month, day, hierarchy. So when we talk about a drill down, drill up in the BI domain, we have a concept called hierarchies. We need to have a data in a hierarchical model so that if I drill to something, I can go to the next level and then I come, I can come back to the uh, up level. So that is basically hierarchy what we create in the dimension model. Uh, let's say uh, this is a, uh, they might say this is a time dimension. So it, it has a hierarchy of year, then it is uh, going down to quarter, then it is going down to month, to day. So this is a hierarchy what we follow in the dimension model. And the last is the fact table. So basically fact table is a table where we store the measures along with the dimensions unique keys. So I will show you all this, how we uh, create a dimension model in the uh, demo. So blend your data to get information driven as decisions that deliver values. So we'll be working on a real time scenario now. I will be, so I'm having a Excel sheet. Uh, that Excel sheet is having some data in it. What we are going to do is we, we will blend that Excel sheet into the database. And from that database, we will create a cube 
and from that queue we will be creating dashboards and SQL reports. So a little uh, introduction to the uh, Pentaho family. Uh, what we will be using right now, we will be using uh, three components of Pentaho BI Suite. So the first one is Pentaho Data Integration PDI. So this is basically an ETL tool. So we use this tool to transform the data from one source and populate our data mart, our data source. So it's a graphical extract transform load tool. Basically, if you, when you will see, I will be showing you that it's a graphical tool where you will be having a lot of steps which you will drag and drop and create your transformations. So it's, it is having very rich library of built-in components from where you can access and transform the data from different sources. Visual interface to call custom codes, analyze, analyze images and view files to create meaningful metadata. So it's a complete visual uh, interface where we can write our Java code also. So we can write our custom codes. We are not limited only to the steps. What are there in the Pentaho data integration? We can create our custom code Java classes and we can create our plugins and add to the PDI. Dynamic transformation using variables to determine field mapping, mappings, validations, and enrichment rules. So these are the couple of things uh, what we can do with PDI. So in today's demo, I will be covering a very basic level right now with PDI and, uh, and uh, schema workbench and SQL. So this will be a complete end-to-end -end life cycle how we design a BI solution. So little brief about the Pentaho server, how our dashboards are there. So it's also a very uh, interactive visual where we can drill down uh, from uh, uh, from the dimensions. We can drill down from one level to another level and see the information, how it's coming up. So it's having out-of-box library for interactive visualization. So uh, there are out-of-box charts um, which are built in in the uh, BI server, which we will be using for our different needs. Then we, have, we are having different plugins installed in our BI server where we can use it to get our business decisions, how we can make it more interactive, how we can deliver and get the information which is stored with different type of uh, visualization plugins available in the BI server. So extreme scale in memory data caching for a speed of thought analysis of large data volumes. So uh, this means that once you have a, a query, uh, once you have a dashboard, so you are coming up with a dashboard and uh, it's having a million of rows, it's having a huge data inside it. So what happened is that first time the initial loading of the dashboards will be slow because the query is getting passed and once it is getting a pass and once it is over after passing of the query, it is cached in the memory. So next time the user hits the same query, the result will be very, very fast. So, so BI server, what it do is that it, it, it is having extreme scale in memory data caching uh, to get the queries cached in so that once the user uh, has done with his first uh, operation, he can get the results fast after that. So this uh, BI server is not only uh, uh, limited to the laptops or your desktops. It is having a very good uh, visual interfaces for the mobiles, tabs, so true mobile experience with support from native gestures and complete analytic capabilities including content creation. So everything what you do over here on the desktop or whatever you do here on the uh, laptop you can easily do on the mobiles also. So that was uh, the theoretical part uh, I was uh, looking to cover for that is done. Now we will be quickly getting into the demo part. Okay. So this is my PDI. So uh, there are a lot of things uh, before uh, we start this. Uh, uh, there are some prerequisites to be covered uh, to run this tool. We need to have Java installed in your system. We need to set up the Java home variable in the environment variables. And after that, this is having just a batch file spoon. So this is, uh, so you will get a zip file basically once you download the uh, PDI from that server uh, from the net, you will get a zip file when you extract it. These are the components what will be, um, uh, which will be extracted. And there will be one file called spoon.bat over here. So 
If you are using a window machines, you can have the spoon.bat and if you are on a Linux or Mac, then you can use spoon.sh. So these are the two files what we will be using right now. So currently I am on Windows, so I will be using on spoon.bat. So this is my spoon interface. When it will come up, it would look like something like this. So on the left hand side, uh, you will see uh, the metadata of transformations jobs. So this is a metadata uh, of what we are having on my right hand side. So if you see that I'm having some sort of uh, database connections available here. So these are my database connections, what, what I'm using. And if I click over here, you can see that I, this is a metadata. You can see what the steps are here right now are listed over here also. So that's the metadata what I'm using right now for this uh, job. If you click on the design tab, you get a couple of another options here. So basically, these are the options uh, which uh, is uh, available for the job. So you can do multiple sort of things over here, like you can uh, do a mail. So you can send the mails. You can do a file management systems. So there are a lot of stuff to be done over here, depending on the business requirement, depending on our uh, use we can use the step different steps on our canvas and make a very good uh, uh, ETL frame uh, ETL tool that can do and extract data from our sources so let's start with the first one so we what we will be doing here is we will be having we are having an excel file over here so this is my excel file so this excel file has some data in it so this is the data it's having one order date so I'm clicking on some of the uh, tables columns which we will be using for this demo part. So one, what we will be using one is order date. We will be using sales amount. We will be using profit. And uh, then we will be using reason, customer segment, pet, pen, uh, product category, subcategory, and product name. So these are the couple of columns which we will be looking into this uh, demo part. So this is my load staging transformation. So this is basically a job. You can see the difference between the uh, icons on the tabs. So this is a job. So job is basically a master for running the transformation. So let's say that I'm having these three transformations and I need to run all these tra three transformation. One thing is that I will go to a particular transformation and run it. I can miss the uh, flow also. So if I run this first, then I will be missing the staging data. So to overcome this, what we do, we use jobs, which will be, uh, uh, which will take the transformation to execute in sequence order, what we want. So this is my uh, staging data. So if I click over here, uh, this is basically an Excel input step. So what I'm doing over here is I'm uh, opening, I'm adding an Excel file. So whatever I'm having over here. So I'm using that Excel file over here. So this is the name of the Excel file, the location. Then the other thing you need to look is the sheet. So basically in this Excel file, I'm having three sheets, but we'll be using only order sheet right now. And then this is the fields. So when you say fields, these are the fields, what are the headers in this Excel file basically. So these headers are available over here for me. And by default, Pentaho is very smart. It automatically did uh, detect the type of the field and it will display uh, here and if it do something wrong that it doesn't detect uh, properly you can change it uh, using this uh, drop down over here and you can also format uh, numbers and date as per your requirement so this is my first step what what it will be doing is it will be read it, it will read the excel file over here and this is the second step. Basically, uh, this is select rename values. This step is used to rename the headings or rename or change the metadata of the uh, fields. So right now, I'm using this only for the heading part. As you can see, this order date, order priority, order quantity is having a space in it. So if I use the same thing and store these field names in the database, uh, so it would be very hard when we will query some something. So a couple of database doesn't rec uh, recognize this space in between. So what I've done here, here is that I have removed the space and give it an, another name. So I have renamed this uh, field basically. You can see that all the fields which are renamed are having space in it. So these are the fields what we uh, from where we have removed the space and renamed it. 
and this is my table output. So here I'm defining on which table my data should go. So for that I need a connection to the database also. So this is my uh, database connection. I'm using MySQL database. I'm using MySQL database. Uh, so my database name is demo and it's having this port number, username and password. So once it is done, uh, I will just run this transformation. What it will do is it will load this Excel file entirely into this table. Before uh, going into detail, let me tell you one thing that we will be, we need to identify the dimensions and fact from this table. So when I've selected a couple of columns, basically what I was referring this as a dimension date because it is describing about something that this sales represent to this date. Like this, we are having a region, we are having customer segment. So these are the dimensions uh, what we need to identify before we start modeling. So before starting the modeling, we need to identify what are our dimensions, what are our measures so that we can create a perfect data model based on star schema or snowflake schema. So if you can see here in the database, uh, when I will connect to this demo database, so I'm having uh, six tables. So these four are my dimensions, what I have identified from my table. One is my fact table and one is the staging data. So the staging data is the data what I am just dumping it from the Excel into this table. So in BI practice, what we do is we try to avoid the connection with the source database as soon as possible. So what we do is that we will just extract the data from the source and dump it to somewhere on our uh, target and then we use the, our target database to do the further processing. So what I have done here is that I have extracted the entire data into this table from the Excel and now on this table I will be creating our dimensions and so you can see the difference. Here is the input is Excel file, output is a table. Now in the table in the dimension I'm having input as a table and output also as a table. So right now what it will do, it will be using that as staging data to create the dimensions. So this will be a region, distinct of a region to be created. Same way uh, this will be a distinct of customer segment and this will be a distinct of uh, product category, subcategory and product name. So if I could quickly run this uh, job, uh, so it will run in this way. It will first load the Excel into the staging table, then it will populate the dimensions and then load the fact table. So once our data model is done, uh, we will be creating a cube on it. So this is my cube. I will be only showing you a single dimension how I've created. So we can take the dimension date, how we create dimension date, and then we will take in the cube. The rest, same process uh, remains the same for creating the dimensions. So my transformation is done. So we can have a success message. So this. Uh, green signal says that the transformation has successfully finished. So my data mart is ready. Uh, so before starting this schema workbench, we do a connection to the database. So this is the same uh, what we have done in the PDI. We will be connecting to a demo database. So let's create a dimension here. Dim date. So if I click on the left hand side, I will see the properties on the right hand side on what I will clicking in. So if I click on the attribute on this uh, dimension main, I get the attribute here. So I can uh, type in the name over here, dim date, then the type of the dimension. So basically in the uh, scheme, in the cubes, we create two type of dimensions. One is a time and one is a standard. So this is a time dimension. So we uh, selected as time. This is my default uh, level. So by, what I mean by default level is that this is the parent of all the levels. 
So at this point, I will see the aggregation of all my year, month, and dates here. So this is my main level. So I, I have given it a caption all date. The primary key here we select. So I am selecting the primary key over here. This is my first level I have created, year, just given a name over here. Then I will be selecting a value from the table, year value. So it's an integer type of value and the level type is time year. So here if you see, we will be selecting uh, whatever uh, time dimensions uh, parameters. So this is a year, so we have selected the time years. Else we will select regular in other cases in the standard dimension. Same way I'm having month, date, so this creates my one hierarchy, dim date, dimension with uh, year, month, and date level. So this is my cube. So once I create this cube, uh, I will be having uh, my aggregation part ready. So basically cube is always created on a fact table. So we have added a fact table, what we have uh, created in our data mark. Then we have used this uh, dim dimensions, what I have created over here. So you can see that here, the foreign key is to the primary key of product. So here we have, so if you see over here, in this default, we have a primary key, product ID. And if you go here, you can see I'm having a foreign key to the product ID. So this is basically a star schema. So my this fact table, this CV demo, it's basically a cube, it's a fact table, is surrounded by a couple of dimensions. And the relationship is by primary key and foreign key over here. So like this, I will be creating multiple uh, uh, dimensions over here. And this is my measure. So by measure, what I mean, the aggregations, the part of uh, the numerical values on which I want to aggregate something. So I've given it a name. And then I'm having what aggregation I need to do on this uh, sales, sum, sales figure. So I've selected some over here and the column from the table. Same way, profit. So in this way, we will create our cube. Once our cube is ready, we, we need to go to the BI server. In the BI server, let's log into BI server again. So before uh, diving into something, we, we will be connecting the proper data source over here. So for manage data sources, we will be selecting that uh, we, will be, we will be creating another JDBC connection to our table. So this is the JDBC connection what I've created over here. If you see the edit. So this is the local host demo database and this is username and password. And this is the mon this is the schema file what we have created in the cube here. So what how we import it, we import it from this import analysis. If you click over here, it will ask for the U path of this schema file. So wherever this schema file is there, you just give it the path, select the data source to which it is connected. In our uh, example, we need to have demo con to be connected with it. So once it is done, we have added the JDBC data source as well as the analysis data source. So now we are ready to go and work on BI server, create different sort of analytics, create different sorts of dashboards and everything.